Okay guys, this is the next uh, little installment on uh, Bill's integral. We got the bolster area line cut and uh, marked with red layout die. And next thing I need to put a half round groove that will um, span from one, li one line cut to the next. And uh, um, the way that I do that is I start with one of these. It's a uh, called a habilis file on the package. It's uh, a little bigger than a needle file. I I hate needle files. They're small and tiny and they flex and I, I just don't care for them. But this is um, significantly stiffer. And um, one thing to note is this bolster is at like 800 grit finish all around the sides and everything and the blade's all finished. So you don't want to be squirreling around and, and cut anywhere other than where you're trying to cut. Um, the the tang has been drawn back and then I draw back into the bolster um, so that the bolster's not you know like 5960 Rockwell like the the blade is um, I don't draw it back real soft because then the the Damascus will etch funny but anyway um, I start by making a, a groove to run in with this and I usually start on this side um, meaning you know the edge closest to me I've got it in my little knife vise um, that I used in the other part of the, the videos and uh, I don't know if there's any trick here other than just being careful um, I like starting with this file first because I can really see where I'm at with it it's it's harder to see with the chainsaw file you know I mean if, if you could see well enough or were comfortable with a chainsaw file right from the get-go then that's just one less step I guess but um, I feel more comfortable doing it this way and uh, for me I just I'm trying to get a groove established but I'm being careful um, you know I got a lot of work in this knife at this point and uh, the idea of just being all half-ass and running everywhere with the file and putting grooves where I don't want them or, or just making this detail of the knife look like crap would be totally pointless so it's something that uh, you just gotta kind of take your time with and be careful um, now I'm one of those guys that tries to kind of figure out where custom knife making you know where some of the history is and if you are only following the guys on the internet right now you um, might not know some of the older names but if you look back just not very long ago really there's guys like Jim Schmidt and Fred Carter and there's actually a whole list of them, but guys like that, that um, they've been doing stuff like this for a long time, so this is nothing new. It's just, uh, I think it adds a really nice detail to a knife. I do it to most of the the spacers and my, my buoy knives. Um, and I really haven't made a whole lot of integrals, but I think I've done this on every one of them. Um, now, the trick or key for me is just focusing on those two lines that I already cut. Trying to stay centered between them. Um, It's starting to get to the point where it's a little bit hard for me to see that, so I just rotate my vise a little bit, get it back to where it's easier for me to see. Um, away you go. Now, for the sake of not taking forever on this, I'm going to stop there with that one. And then this is a, a quarter inch file, it's a Nicholson quarter inch chainsaw file and uh, just use that groove that we just filed as a
starting point and just gently start spreading that cut out so that it spans to both both of the cut lines. Now you want to be careful here because you don't want to be way off center and you don't want to you don't want to annihilate these sides. You want them to come up and just this groove to just come up to these edges and stop because otherwise you're going to have your two line cuts and a big old sloppy groove in between the two of them. That's that's not going to look good. So I just try to do smooth smooth strokes here and gently take this stuff out. Now, hopefully you can see that that's getting wider. Everything's getting smoothed out. Now, one thing I do quite a bit, if I feel like I can control the file better pulling it towards me, then you just flip it around. And uh, this is where I don't know, I don't think there's a right or wrong. As long as you're going against the way the teeth are intended to cut, you do what you feel most comfortable most steady. Now my line cuts they run all the way around the knife. These are gonna stop and make little half moons in the the top and bottom side of the blade. Well the choil on the spine technically. So anyway, that's the process there and what I'm after is this. That's this one I've already done and it needs to be cleaned up. So I have a lot of these little deals that I've made. Um, this is a piece of round stock with um, welded to a uh, piece of bar stock. And I just wrap. These are my cutoffs for my nine inch discs. Wrap these around and I like this because I can pinch it really hard and I can see where I'm at. I just spray a little oil on there to help help lube it up while I'm sanding it. Now this is where you learn really quick to be more careful when you're filing because if you just kind of hack it out with the file and then try to clean it up with your sandpaper you're going to be here forever um, whereas if you cut the grooves nice and smooth and do a few light passes at the end to, to get a nice nice cut where the scratches aren't real deep then this will come out pretty darn fast. Um, not quite that fast, but that's that's almost there. That was 120 grit, and then I just progressed, you know, um, like on this, this is Damascus, so you can take the groove to, um, you know, 500 or 800 grit, and it'll be nice and clean and ready to etch. And, um, you know, then I do a couple passes over the, the top, just with a, um, a hard rubber uh, sanding block and you know my final grit on in this case 800 just to make sure that um, if any of the surface got raised up at all it, everything gets sanded off and is smooth because you don't want any sharp edges for your fingers so um, anyway yeah that's it that's uh this is the last thing i have to do to this knife before i etch it so that's it for now thanks